Hey everybody, this is Rido, and we're back to Hand of Fate. So we're trying to wrap up everything. We're trying to play as every single of the DLC characters to see if they're making really lasting differences. Uh, the trick here, I suppose, is they really aren't. They're, you start with slightly different items, but it's kind of difficult to even figure out whether the items you're starting with are random items because of something else or specific items for instance here the only card that I'm probably getting as we're playing as the Lion Prince uh, is the Lion's Prince Helm which health is gained from eating eating is increased as your health gets lower is an extra ability but on top of that he has some just uh, special different things here like max health start with low max health but increase it with each defeated enemy up to 200 which is actually kind of low because I have I have gotten above 200 so every time we play the jack of dust we almost certainly run into the new cards that like this one I can't get rid of until let us take I a defeat token the on their kraken so you're constantly, because of the DLC, stuck with the Ghost of the Sea, which is not fun. Hmm. So... We can't do anything with this, with the Devil Trader, because you need three blessings, which I'll never get just playing the... A jack of trades. Here's the trial by combat that requires. I will happily wager on the outcome. Mm. I do not think you have what it takes. So, the trial by combat here, it's. We have 40 health, we're probably gonna lose immediately. And I think they want a combo. I don't think they actually want you to win. Because, look, it's giving you this counter, 0 of 30 at the bottom. So, they want you to not take damage and get a combo up to 30, which is quite the amount to get. And I just don't think... I'm definitely not going to get this done with these guys. There we go. Immediate, immediate death. Death cannot be cheated, only postponed. And the cold embrace of death, and the first stuttering steps of new life. What we were managing to do by picking the Jack of Dust here is we're having a very accelerated experience of what you would normally have. Uh, I am not the first to deal the cards, nor are you the first to play. I do not expect we will be the last. Again, this token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Given the new card that can give you a token, but sadly the only ones I have left are the custom fate cards like this one and about six other cards that require getting very, very lucky. And honestly, I think there's probably less than 30 cards in this entire game. There's a token in it and for you not, if you win. It's not going to change anything. Despite, all right, so test of pride. Despite having rested and safely, you're suddenly awoken and surrounded by the Pride Council, the eldest of your kin, who led all of you towards the reclaiming the land from the beast. We sent you into the wild to see if you could grow into a strong member of our Pride. Now you will be judged. With every kill you've made, you grow stronger, but are you strong enough? The Pride Council sits in judgment of you. Well be upon you, you are not yet fit for the pride. When we next meet, it would benefit you to have hunted more of the prey 
that infest this land. After judging you, the leaders address you. The strength of the pride in this, the lion and the strength of the lion is the pride. The council disappears as suddenly as they appeared. So I can't even get this one. Uh, I would need to play like one of the later fights. Maybe the dealer. He has a pirate map. A Maybe map, card. a quest, and a solution for those with the skill to decipher it. In a dark seaside tavern, you inspect the pirate map that you found on the drunken winch. It marks the location of a small island. Payton, the local fisherman, offers passage to the island marked on the map for a fee of ten gold. Sure. You sell out. You sail out to the island, which is covered in trees and dominated by an old volcano. You explore for many hours, finally coming across an old tomb hidden in a small cave. Uh, the inscription reads. Here lies Dark Torn, Slayer of Dragons, in the Second Age. You, you, you prize open the stone coffin? I think that means pry open the, the stone coffin, but only found this strange scroll inside. The guard's token is now yours. The writing on the parchment is in no language you've ever seen before. You take it anyway and leave the island. So that event just goes to the next card in that chain of events it's going to give me a dragon all sorts of terrible things item, live in obviously. caves are you sure as soon as they mention dragons you you kind of knew once again you have reached that's what was going to happen can you find your foe here we are at the trial by combat again and i enter and i'm going to lose again <laughs> And that will be the end of this run. I really did want to actually defeat somebody, but the way I'm playing is only leaving room open for for a few cards. Wow! Basically, two attack skills me. He is a very, very difficult character to play as I can tell. Once more you find your fate. So it goes. And it seems just really strange that So we just unlocked the mysterious parchment card. It feels really strange that there isn't a difficulty setting separate of this. So if you want to play these fates you have to play them on on whatever difficulty they are by default which isn't isn't something i particularly want so like i could leave the trial by combat out but it makes more sense so we have same same old cards this one this one this one these those three probably never gonna get done this one i'll probably never get done well, at least won't get it done in a reasonable time because you have to have three helmets. This one I could run into. This one I could run into. And this one I could get lucky on. And that's the Curse of the Lion Prince. Next one we have is the Explorer's Gift. Can't wear heavy armor. Moving over completed encounters costs no food. And he has the Lost Island. Uh, extra card. It is really weird how you come in and out of these menus back and forth too. It's kind of a mess. We can hope that as each card is unveiled, as each new concept is explored, that we learn something about ourselves or something about you at least. There is an achievement for wearing all the skelter, skeleton gear at the same time. Again, Win this you'd have to almost, my token. you'd almost have to play the game on endless to get some of these achievements. Like wearing all the dragon equipment, almost certainly you have to do that on endless. And then that probably will put you at the highest level you can get. There is an achievement for getting down to, I believe like level 50 on endless. Uh, I can't do that section because I just don't have enough gold. I can't do this because I don't have enough blessings. 
mysterious parchment. I'm always suspicious of such coincidence. Even so, sometimes cards emerge from the deck in order. In a far-flung village, you stumble upon a small church of the to the old gods. You find a monk's name named Pewtwood. He claims to be able to translate the parchment you found in the Dragon Slayer's tome. It's a very old language. Few could even recognize it, let alone be able to read it. My services won't be cheap, but I know that our small village will benefit greatly from your gold. He wants 150 gold. Can't pay it. Decline to offer the money. The monk remains impassive as you leave the church. So, can't go forward on that that card either. And I just won't be able to do any of these playing these quick games. So I could then start playing endless games for each of these characters. Once again, you have reached and spend. The depths. Potentially Can you find your foe? on each each character the to deeper unlock you go, the harder things those become. last six cards. There you go. Blood a challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. That really is about the last card I even have a chance to succeed at. We need the success. I got lucky. The success from the bid, the strange creature returns. Your item will be gift wrapped and sent to you. The card token is now yours. Same as blood auction four. I mean three. So as far as our item, uh, reveal stairs, you start with the explorer's helmet, which is an item you can get for all the other characters, and let's see, you can't wear heavy armor, and moving over completed cards costs no food. So the explorer is probably a good card to play with at the very beginning of playing this, but it would be much better to play easy. Again, you face the Jack of Dust. Press on. Do not give up this early. Hmm. And we'll have to just see. Can my 50 health? <laughs> Try and take out all these guys. Um, 33 health. I don't think that's going to happen. The Jack of Dust particularly has an issue where he just has an uncounterable attack. I'm not sure he actually had all these attacks when we first fought him. He may have gotten more powered up with the items. I am down to 3 health, so if I somehow won this, it would be amazing. Now that was close. That was something I've never heard before. So there was the achievement the for him. beating Perhaps a guy with less than five the health. There's also an achievement for starting a fight with less than five health, which is almost impossible to get. For winning the blood auction, I get gain 25, a ring of exchange, and blood auction five. Shall we deal again? And so we're just rushing through here. It. The, the DLC feels so much like an afterthought. In fact, anything you don't unlock by the time you play the game, uh, beat the game, feels exactly like an afterthought. It's just like, there's no, no card here that justifies the continuing of the play. Just 
no reason why. Uh, whatever this ghost gives me, I'm not really that interested that it's worth doing the trial by combat. Whatever this gives me, it's not really worth paying 150. Whatever this gives me doesn't isn't really worth this struggle of getting three blessings. And so on and so on and so on. And then the same is to be is true for each of these fates. I I feel like I'm repeating myself. I absolutely am. Let's see, this is the merchant guide. Must visit every shop and will be ambushed more often. Revert merchants, ambush curse, reduce prices, shop combat. You will always be ambushed at a tinker shop or jeweler. Wow, so the merchant guard is an interesting class in that it is just going to see more fights than most of the other classes. I say that I created this game. Many of the things I've told you are true, but not that. I do not know who created it. I merely perfected it. If the player reaches zero health but still has food, they will receive health to the equal to the amount of the food and all their food is consumed. Eh, that's not too bad. That that's actually Very rather nice helpful. indeed. Soldiers on leave again. We play for a token now. Let's see. Can't get that one done simply because I just don't have three helmets and I never will. Killing bandits camped at the shops gives a bonus gold gain for selling an item. Which old gods, though? There have been so many, all so. of them young once. So really, the only card Bound I can more, even do seeking the heart of it all is this one. Merchants in distress. Let's see what this is. Again, a token is at stake. Merchants along this road have been under sanction. Sustained attacks from bandits have been sent to investigate, but you arrived too late from the latest attack. By the time you arrive, treasure goblins are already looting the place. So three of goblins. This this fate doesn't particularly seem like he is. See, it, it so feels like every time you hit these guys, they're supposed to drop gold, but they're not really doing that. Not a bit of gold was dropped from any of those. And some fates obviously don't have as many of these cards as others. Some of them, it's like three, some of them, it may be as many as eight. You find that the merchant barely survived the attack and is badly wounded. He coughs up blood as he talks. Please send for help. There's a town not far from here. The healer can help me. Uh, what do you want to do? Let's go for help. You travel to the nearest town and retrieve the healer, but return too late. The crows have already started feeding when you return. Well, that was the wrong choice. Head downwards if you dare. A lot of these characters just don't don't feel like they change Once they're again, change you have the reached game too much. The depths. Can you find your foe? Hmm. It yeah, it just doesn't really make sense. So you must approach the shop, you can't pass it by. Seems like you can pass Pass it by just fine. Again, you face the jack of dust. Press on. Do not give up this early. Each of these fight sequences, except for one of the fates, were about the same time. They all take about two minutes to take these guys out. They're not incredibly easy, nor are they incredibly difficult. 
Except for that one fate where the guy really was a bad fighter. They cut his attack ability down to like half the other players. That is another flaw with this game, is it's just not clear as to what it's really doing. At the core of there are only scraps left. The Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I think my emergency ring just kicked in. Uh, at the core of Dungeons and Dragons, you're given actual numbers and actual stats. You can actually see that and do the math. And most games that try to make these things digital take those elements out, but this one needs to somewhere show you the difference. Uh, it would be pointless for a player to have to reverse engineer the game and figure out which weapon does... Down into the worms uh, with him. How many Perhaps damage... Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave. Uh, or so. Well, the weapons, we know how much damage they do, but we don't know how much the shields Shall we deal again? really deflect. We don't know what our speed really is. We don't know... Uh, our distance and our roll, if that can be affected ever. Uh, we don't know what a lot of the items do until you use them and, and figure it out for yourself. The explanations, while not wrong, aren't particularly thorough. Uh, like, here's a good example. Uh, press left bumper to perform a killing blow that also drains your health. How much of your health does it drain? It doesn't say. Why doesn't it say when I go in to inspect and find out? We've got three more to do. The Hoarder's Desire. Let's see, what's the deal with him? Grow stronger the more you carry. The more spare equipment you hoard, the more health you have. The more damage in combat you, when you have more spare equipment. See, I think the Hoarder's Desire is probably the best card you could ever have in your deck. Um, that's probably the right fate to always play as. Just because you could pick up and collect things Games like crazy. Designed. Not in the way you think. They grow as we work on them. They evolve around the players who flow through. The things they love and hate become part of our firmament. So who hmm. is the true creator? So, the Hoarder's Desire Helm increased damage against goblins and increased spoils when they're around. Trial by combat. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. I'm just gonna leave the trial by combat. Soldiers on leave. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. If I could get one more helmet, I could actually get that quest done. Hmm. And see, there's no reason to even Deeper towards our foe. Go to the mysterious parchment because that's 150 gold. I only have 45 health. Once again, you have reached the depths. Can you find your foe? I will happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. So I can't even do the blood auction because I have only 45 blood and they want 60. Now we have the Jack of again, Dust again. Again, you face the Jack of Dust. Press on. Do not give up this early. And like the lion character, this one is just not going to be very strong at the beginning. Which then kind of only makes sense for me if you could make this character an easy character and make everybody else weaker, uh, which you can't do. That makes this character almost impossible to play with. Down to 28 health of 45. I don't think I'm gonna win this. Did I just take out the king? I don't think so. Unless he gets incredibly strong. 
for half warding even one hour. At my 13 health, I think I've lost. Six health. Well, he's the only one I have to deal with. But, no. Another death. Death is kind of pointless in this game. Perhaps you could use some assistance. All of this death but striving onwards. It is distasteful. Again, you lose. I thought you would do better than this. So, yeah, I don't think you could take that character out, so I don't know how you play that play as that guy at all. We just tried him on the easiest of the easy, and it didn't work. It feels like you're going to have to delete your progress, and that's not acceptable. That's completely unacceptable. I haven't been looking at their the loadout things. But, so the next one we have is the monk, which gold cards have no effect, you were rewarded for slaying undead, equipped to fight to undead foregoes material wealth, you have a mace and a shield, and no gold. Yeah, it really doesn't make sense. I don't know how you could do any anything. I don't think you could play Endless as that character Death. we just played as. You use the word so often. I don't think you, you could play You run out of food and you die. Anything. You lose your health and you die. Yet, you're still here. We do not speak of the true death, the final oblivion. Only the death of the game, where your peace begins again and moves across the table. This game, like all games, touches on that true death, however, for a life must be lost, and lost for all time. Hmm. So we'll just move forward. It's better than trudging along a muddy road, certainly. Once again, you have reached the depths. Can you find your foe? The black deck delivers again. Again, you face the jack of dust. Press on. Do not give up this early. So I didn't even find that character's card. The monk fights with a different weapon. Is he a better attacker? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I can't help but feel like he is slightly better warrior than some of the other characters. He starts with 100 health. He seems to be doing a little bit more damage. Although it's hard to tell. It's, it's, it's a little surprising you can't see a life bar on even the final bot, the, the big guys, uh, just kind of incomplete it feels like. So like, how do I know if this guy is one hit away from dying or like a uh, hundred hits away from dying? They could have easily put a life bar on top of them. Or made the character turn more bloody Down and into red. the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. Shall we deal again? So last thing we need to do, I feel is let's actually go to endless mode 
and let's play on hard. Well, actually, that won't work. Well, we need to go in story mode, and then we'll play on hard. All these characters, you, you really would have to play as them before you unlocked anything, I think. They don't fit into the main game. It's just a, it's just kind of an afterthought. The DLC is not worth it. Even though it gives you more events, uh, well, I guess maybe it is worth it, but don't plan on playing any of these different fates. I imagine what you'll have to do, if you're anything like me, you're going to have to play the main game on easy. And then if you want the achievements, you're going to have to do a lot of extra play. Probably as much time, if not more, than it took you to play on easy as all the other characters. Whether that's default mode or warlord. Some of the achievements specifically are going to be on hard warlord. Mode. Done. Warlord unlocks more cards which is interesting and that then turns it around and goes to say the like 40 cards in these decks only 10 or so are actually used against the jack of dust unless they add an extra uh, level here. You can see playing on hard mode all of a sudden Do you believe really we does will change the game. And returns us to the world in order to experience afresh all that has happened. I do. Yet I cling still to this semblance of life and will not go willingly through the door. Trader. Can't do anything there. I'm kind of forcing the hand of the decks. So, Warlord 1. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. Rumors of a temple long forgotten god lured you to a desolated wastelands. You complete the necessary blood ritual in order to gain the attention of the dealers. Present fills your mind, bringing you to your knees. What do you seek, mortal? A thunderous voice in your mind demands. Power, you respond, with the determination you can muster in the face of such a being. Power to crush my enemies. Many a mortal has begged for my favor. The enemy cries, I will tell you where power may come can't be found, but you must recover it yourself. Hidden in the valley of the hill giants, there is a cave. Inside that cave lies what you seek. Suddenly it withdraws on its own realm, leaving you breathless and alone. The card's token is now yours. So that felt like that was going to be a huge fight, and it really wasn't anything but dialogue. So even a lot of these extra scenarios aren't... They aren't anything for the DLC. They're just Roaming like ever written forward, story. Hunting for the truth. I have 80 health. Will I be able to survive a five skeletons? Well, not skeletons. Well, if I don't survive these guys, I wasn't gonna survive the jack of dust, anyways. don't make the warlord particularly like weak I certainly fought it with weaker creatures I just lost a ring because of a curse but there I got 15% max health that Once almost again puts you have me. reached the depths can you find your foe
Let's look in the shop if we can. Just to see when you're playing on difficulty, difficult, what things cost. Like to heal, 15 health is 8, that's not that bad. To remove a curse, difficulty of picking a successful card, splinter of jewels. What do things sell as? Things seem to sell for the same price always. Increase the wearer's determination to succeed. What does that even mean? The cost for food is the same. I'm sure you are grateful for that. So it doesn't even seem like the shops change on the on hard mode. Um. Here is the jack of dust. Again, you face the jack of dust. Press on. Do not give up this early. So there's there's nothing more to do in this game, really. Well, there is more to do in this game. It's just at this point, either you've seen seen the, you've seen the game, or at least 99.9% of it. I would, I would guesstimate. Either you like it or you don't. You're will, either you're willing to overlook the repetitive fighting sequences or you aren't. Whether you're, you, either you're willing to accept getting the DLC for extra encounters, even knowing that you'll probably never play those fate cards, uh, or if you do, it's going to be like months after you play the main story. And if you do get the game now, you do have to look towards Hand of Fate too. It's almost... As soon as Hand of Fate 2 comes out, I think you're probably not going to have a good reason to play Hand of Fate 1 at all, even if you haven't done everything. Maybe if you unlock every single achievement in Hand of Fate 2 when it comes out, there might be a good excuse to go back to play the original. But I don't think you can play a game like this for twice as long as I've played it, which has been a long time. Uh, there's not enough here that's different through each playthrough to really fix this. This game would Down probably have worked a lot better Perhaps there is as a the mobile game. So. Uh, there's not a lot here actually that, that screams it needs to be on the PC. Uh, if you were if you were, uh, Shall if this we was on a cell phone it? game and you had like a port, a commute to school or to, uh, to work, I could see then playing this like one game every day. You could play some of these things, uh, some of these, uh, scenarios in less than five minutes of a commute even, so it makes sense. But then there's just a lot of things that don't make sense in this game, too. It's like how easily we went through these first set of bosses, and then we, it spiked in difficulty right about here, and then we had to go to easy mode for the rest. And there's no way I'd, I feel like I'd be able to beat the dealer in hard mode. I Until just now, don't think I have that's shown gonna compassion. Happen. And you would be best to test me no further. The skill that this game should have you show, the skill should be in building your deck. And they're actually, even though there's a ridiculous amount of cards in this game, there isn't, they're not varied enough. Not a single one of these cards is a hundred percent going to improve your uh, station in the fight. Some of them are definitely a lot worse than others. For instance, the Devil's Carnival is a really bad card. You wouldn't want that in your deck. So why is it recommending me that card? I have no idea. Maybe it's because in the Devil's Carnival there is some item, some equipment, or something that it, you can get. And that's how they look at it. But Devil's Carnival is actually awful. Uh, 
metal ore is also a pretty bad card to even though it works with holy forge to give you a unique item after that point after you've unlocked that unique item you need to get rid of these two cards and not have them in your deck there's there's far too much in this game that doesn't make sense and things like you you can't even have a different save file that's really weird like because if I was gonna play as any of these other characters they need to be their own save files uh, they, it changes the game quite a bit to try to play the monk now versus at the beginning of the game and it doesn't help looking at these bars it seems like there's a lot more to be unlocked but I suspect that it, that's not really the case. I suspect it's barely six more cards of encounters. And I would bet maybe six to twelve more items of varying importance in this. And I think that's it. Let's see how far back we can go. We can go back to this point. So... That's going to be my coverage of Hand of Fate. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed this game. It's not perfect. It definitely has some flaws. It definitely needs to rethink uh, how it displays things, what information it gives the player. Simple things like why is there two decks of cards on the player side and then four decks of cards on the dealer side just for no reason. It seems like... A lack of thought was certainly put into it, and I am hoping that they improve on it. It's still very, very difficult in my mind to think, should this have been a multiplayer co-op game like Hearthstone? Almost certainly the answer there is yes. There is a Skyrim Legends, uh, or is it, uh, no, it's Elder Scrolls Legends Take your time. card game. Look around. You can't look around. I'm sure game. you know you can add and remove cards from your deck. But that's feel another free issue is you can't control the camera first. in a lot of sections. You can't zoom in on cards, you can't see it. Uh, there's an Elder Scrolls Legends game that may have some of the feel of this fantasy world that will be in the online co op game, so maybe that will become the next big thing. Whereas Hearthstone is kind of World of Warcraft silly. Uh, because it's based on World of Warcraft and it has a more silly, funny way of doing things. Uh, plus, it's slightly different from your standard fantasy fair. This game definitely does need a multiplayer mode. Even if it was just local co-op multiplayer, or well, yeah, co-op would be interesting, but no local versus multiplayer is what I meant to say. Uh, but it needs online multiplayer too. I don't think free-to-play is the right way to go with this because I don't think they have enough development uh, ability to conti continuously add new cards and this game in particular it really wouldn't work that well if they were constantly adding new cards because it's not really a card collection game because the cards don't really interact with each other it's, it's a very different thing it's not really even a card game it's a RPG game that uses cards to build the board and that's a big difference but there, there really should be a multiplayer in this they really should have thought a lot of things through some more but overall it's it's a surprise hit it, it was good I had heard other people say it's good definitely worth the money playing at least the original game and probably the, the DLC too I will almost certainly in my own free time come back and play this a few times uh, but you've seen more than enough to, of the game to make your decision uh, I think the coin idea is cool but it it's really just a visual thing uh, but I wouldn't lose it so yeah that's Hand of Fate I recommend it as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment if you want to and watch every second of my videos all of that helps out if you want to support me you can click on my name righto that will get you to my main youtube page on the right is a blue button that says support this channel 
you can click that and make a donation. Also on my main YouTube page is a playlist tab. You can click to see a playlist for every game I've ever covered. So I'm sure you'll find something there that interests you. And then down below in the description box, I have links to all my social media sites. Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Tumblr, Steam, and Bevel.net. So you can friend and follow me on all of those services. That helps me with those services and it helps you see when my latest video is available. Thank you for watching this series with me. Thank you for going through it. It's been quite long for this style of game, but it's been pretty fun. Thanks for watching yet again, and have a good evening. Bye.